You see, I'm kind of lazy, so when I eat s'mores, I don't want to have to try to assemble it. I just want the chocolate inside the marshmallow already. So the thing is, is I haven't made marshmallows since just about culinary school, which is, I'm old. And so the first thing we need to do because they need to set is make those marshmallows that will fit into this thing. We're not going to need too many things. Marshmallows are actually pretty straightforward, but they're just temperamental because you're cooking sugar. And anything when you're cooking sugar just always gets a little weird. I'm going to need an apron for this. Now that we're locked and loaded with our apron, the first thing we need to do is actually start cooking our sugar. And this recipe is derived from Flavor Bender, which you can find down below. I'm gonna be using their marshmallow recipe because it looks really straightforward. I think it's pretty easy to do, but on top of that, I'm gonna use that as a base for what we actually need to accomplish, which is chocolate stuffing those marshmallows. So here's the pot that I'm gonna be using for this. It's just kind of a deeper pot, so it's a little bit easier to work with, and I have measured out all of my ingredients already. So I have 412 grams worth of granulated sugar. We're gonna add that to the pot along with some agave syrup. Now you can also use corn syrup if you have it. The agave syrup actually will help the sugar not crystallize and kind of give it a more of a gummy texture to the marshmallows, which I really like. So we're gonna add that to that as well. Grab a, grab a heat proof spatula because you're probably gonna need one later. So you may as well make it dirty now just to make sure all of that agave is in there. And then we're also going to add one half cup worth of water or it comes out to about 100 milliliters worth of water. So add that to that as well. Now you don't have to really stir this too much. Just kind of give it a little bit of a shake just so that way it seems like all of your sugar and your water gets saturated. I'm going to show you guys. So this way you can kind of see it getting a little saturated, which is great. That's kind of what you're going to look for. So you see how there's big clumps right there. I'm just going to make sure that I kind of do this. I mean, I guess I can use, use the spatula as well. I just don't want to have these huge clumps of sugar that haven't touched water yet. Otherwise, because if I do that, it has a higher chance of burning or crystallizing. We're gonna be cooking this to 242 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's gonna be, you know, that's the reason why I hate working with sugar. It's super temperamental. So we're gonna take this, bring it over the stove and start cooking this guy. Now on the stove, we're gonna bring this up to just about a medium heat at first. So that way we can get a better gauge on this. And we're gonna cook this. Once that kind of starts simmering a little bit, we're gonna throw a lid on it and let it just hang out for a few minutes, about two to three minutes. Throw our candy thermometer in there to try to get that gauge of temperature. And once that's ready, we can actually start working with the gelatin and everything else. So while that's going, we're gonna do the gelatin. So now to make things easy, grab your mixing bowl, because you are gonna need a mixing bowl for this. Um, it's, you can also do it with kind of a hand mixer as well if you have one, but I have a KitchenAid, I don't have a hand mixer, which I probably should get. Um, just make sure there's no crap in your bowl. Now we're gonna take a half a cup worth of water, once again, so about 100 milliliters, throw that in there. And then you're also going to take all of your gelatin. So we gotta bloom the gelatin in the water. This is 21 and a half grams worth of gelatin. We're just gonna add that straight in to our water and just let that bloom a little bit, you know? You don't really have to do, try to get all of it in there. You don't really have to do too much with this. I do like to like take a chopstick and kind of just swirl it around just a little bit. Otherwise you'll end up with weird clumpiness of gelatin that didn't really get any hydration. So this is what it should start to look like. It's gonna be really, really thick, but we wanna make sure that this is bloomed. And I can already hear my sugar starting to go a little bit because my burners are a little weird. The, the burners themselves kind of go up to the sides of the pan a little bit too much. So I wanna make sure I pay attention to that. But that's all you really need to do. Let the gelatin just hang out. You can also do this with agar, but I don't like it as much for marshmallows. I had marshmallows with agar before. The problem with those is that they're a little, a little more firm, a little, a little more rough tasting. So I, I like this version better. But if you're a vegan or whatever the case is, you can use agar instead. So once I start seeing a little bit of bubble action happen on my sugar, there's just a little bit going on. I'm gonna throw a lid on this guy. We're gonna let this cook with the lid on just for about two to three minutes. I'm gonna set a two minute timer up on my microwave here and then we're gonna check on it and throw in our thermometer right after that. So after about two minutes, my timer just went off. I'm gonna take this guy off and I wanna make sure that there aren't too many crystals. It looks like it should be okay. I'm not the best with sugar, but now I'm gonna take my candy thermometer and place this onto the pot, making sure that it doesn't touch the bottom. Otherwise you won't get a good gauge. It just has to barely touch the sugar. Hopefully this actually is deep enough. So that way the, the gauge sits properly on there. Why is it super like foggy? So I really want to look at this because it is climbing pretty fast. I'm going to start turning it down right now just to make sure you can see it's well, I mean, you can't see it, but 
It's at 180 Fahrenheit and I only want to take it to 242. What's nice is that my candy thermometer actually has like softball labeled on here and I'm really looking for that softball stage. I'm gonna cheat a little bit, make a deeper well. This will give me a better gauge. See, now it's climbing pretty high. I'm just gonna hold it. We're just gonna hold it here. We're gonna hold it until it gets to softball stage and then we're gonna turn it off. Okay, so it looks like I'm just about, this is kind of bad because my thermometer is very hard to use right now, but it's just about at the softball stage, about 242. So I'm just gonna turn this off. We're gonna completely remove it from the heat. We're just gonna let that hang out for just a second while I get rid of this freaking super hot death instrument. So now while that's cooling for just a minute, I don't wanna let it go too long. I have some chocolate chips here and these are semi-sweet. I like this stuff, it tastes really nice, but they're a little bit big. We're just gonna give them a little, a little chop chop, you know? Yeah, this is a good knife. The reason why I'm cutting these up I probably should have bought just a giant bar of chocolate. So that way I could have just cut the block up uh, because this is a little more of a pain to do, but it's very workable still for the most part. The reason why I'm cutting these up is because I want them to kind of flake and make like a layer of chocolate over my marshmallow layer. So that way we're gonna do a layer of marshmallow, then the chocolate, then the marshmallow to let it all set. So I wanna make sure that this is somewhat broken up and uh, this may take a minute. So I spent some time chopping up this chocolate, but I really wanna start doing those marshmallows and making sure that the liquid is still warm while it's whipping. Um, but I think this is gonna be really nice because it's not super small pieces, like most of it is cut up, but it'll allow kind of like this variation and nice like chocolate chunks with like slightly more melted chocolate in different areas. Kind of like when you're actually camping, you know? So that way you have a little bit of both because we all know that when you're making s'mores, it's never even, it's never even. You always have one spot that maybe is a little more melty than the other and that's totally fine and have chocolate everywhere. That's kind of like what my, uh, you know, lawyer looks like. It's, it's really nice. Little pieces, big pieces, small pieces, all the pieces. Now let's start mixing these marshmallows. Here's our bloomed gelatin now. It's, it's bloomed. It's good to go. That's what that looks like. It almost looks like maple syrup, which is really nice. It's what you're looking for. Now we're going to slowly, hopefully with some kind of an attachment. Throw this guy on there, lock and load. We're gonna slowly pour this in until it's incorporated. And you just kind of want to pour it on the side. So that way the hot syrup doesn't necessarily like scald the gelatin. So just do this pretty slowly until it's fully incorporated. You're almost tempering the gelatin in a way from what I understand. So that way it's not like going overboard or too quickly or anything like that, cause you're not in a hurry. But what I am doing is I'm keeping it low until it's, until I can see a lot of that gelatin has kind of combined. And you're just gonna continue to pour this in. The one thing I'm worried about with my mixer in particular is it may not touch the bottom. So I may have to kind of like scrape it just a touch before everything gets started. And I wanna make sure I scrape all of the syrup out of my pot as well. Cause a lot of it does get up getting left behind so that's why we kept that spatula always scrape always always scrape hopefully uh hopefully we got most of it in there it looks like we oh god now there's sugar everywhere what a fail town now we can actually start whipping this thing up So this is gonna whisk for about three to five minutes until you start seeing get it some volume and towards the end is when we're gonna hit it with a pinch of salt and just a little bit of vanilla to finish it off and then we're pretty much good to go. But we also have to prep out our pans ahead of time so it has somewhere to land, so keep that in mind. I want you guys to see this. I know it's super loud, but this is super important. This has been about two minutes. You can see the difference in color now. You can also see how much volume it's getting, but this has only been about two minutes. We need to go another like, Honestly, like another six minutes at least to kind of get that volume we're looking for. So while that's going in the meantime, I'm gonna start greasing up my pan and you already see I kind of started already, but that thing is so loud. So I'm just gonna do one of these and you can imagine me greasing up this pan. Yeah, you wanna make sure you use butter or shortening and just uh, make sure that it's completely greased in the corners, get all that good good in there. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna have a bad time, very bad time. Okay, so this has been going for just about 10 minutes now and it's super glossy. It has just about a little over doubled in size. I kind of want to like scrape the bottom and see what it looks like, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. You can see a lot of shine on the actual marshmallow. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I hope that this is volumed enough because it's it's been going for a while now, so I don't know if I'm gonna get much more air incorporated into this, but I think this is gonna be okay. But now remember, so this is just about done mixing, but I still need to add in a little bit of salt as well as my small cap full of vanilla. So I'm just gonna bring this back up. This is gonna be the last just about minute of mixing. So that way we can get just a little more flavor into it because you gotta have you gotta have vanilla in this and you gotta have salt. Now we'll just do like a nice like whoop, whoop, whoop. let those incorporate for another minute and then it's pretty much done. 
So now this is ready to go. It looks super shiny, which is great. We're gonna pull this off of here and I'm gonna get rid of this mixer so we have a little bit of room to work with because this is a tiny, tiny kitchen. Ooh, the mixer's hot. Oh, that mixer's been going for a while. Oh, that is warm. Sorry, mixer. I, I, I apologize for everything you just had to go through. Now we gotta get all this marshmallow out of this. Uh, the only thing is, is when you're using a spatula for like marshmallow or any kind of fluff, just grab yourself some nonstick spray. It does go a long way, just like spray it over the sink or something. That way nothing really sticks to this. You know, cause that's just not fun when everything starts sticking because of the marshmallow. So what I'm gonna do is we have our marshmallow and we have our chocolate. I kept the uh, the pan that we're using in the fridge just so that way the butter, you know, wasn't warm or anything like that. It's nice and solid again. Uh, I'm gonna try to do about half of the marshmallow. Oh my God. Should that be a look at that. I just want to stick my mouth right there. So we're gonna try to get maybe half of it on the bottom. I, I just want to have even layers. Look at that thick, delicious looking marshmallow. I want to work with this quickly though. So that way I don't have anything like sitting around too long. I don't know if it's going to make a difference or not. So now let's try to get all of this deliciousness off here. Some of the vanilla didn't incorporate, but that's okay. We're just, oh yes. Oh my God. I love marshmallow. It's one of my favorite things. The, the hard part is going to try to be getting an even layer on the bottom. So we'll see if we can attempt to do this as quickly as we can. So nothing starts really setting. You can see, oh my, oh, I'm so happy with this guys. Oh, wow. This is, this is exciting. Look at this beauty. So I think I have, I have quite a bit. I'm gonna do a little more, a little more mallow. Try to pack it in a little bit, you know, so there's no weird crevasses. Just, it's just voluptuous. It does feel a little strong. Try to make sure that this is as even as possible. No air pockets. It should settle just a little bit. It won't settle much, but we're looking to do kind of like that at about the halfway mark. I think that's gonna be okay. Maybe I'll try to spread it out just a little bit better. All right, we need to continue on with the chocolate. Now with the chocolate, I mean, this is kind of straightforward. So we're just gonna just sprinkle it on there in a nice layer. I wanna kind of have it thick enough to where it feels like, you know, there's an old school Hershey bar right in the middle, but it's not Hershey's, it's actually good chocolate. I was hoping that the, the marshmallow would have been a little more pourable. This, we're just gonna go with all the chocolate. Just use a little bit. So now what's nice is since I actually didn't chop it up, so I'm just gonna press this just a little bit. This makes me so happy. Now we're gonna finish it. This is gonna be the hard part because I don't want the chocolate to lift. My best bet should be to just dump all of that. Oh yes. Sorry guys, I'm having a moment over here. You're just gonna have to stick with me for a minute. Look, oh, and the, and the amount looks perfect too. I think, I don't think that I can't get much more out of this. It's kind of stuck on there, but that's okay. We got plenty, I think. We're going to attempt to very, very carefully. I may have to wash the spatula and get more butter on it so it doesn't pull, pull when I do this. Cause remember, I want that chalk to kind of stay in place and I wanted to have that illusion of like marshmallow encasing the chocolate. So let me, let me wash this and then I'll hit it with a little more spray to help with that nonstick. Okay, I'm back with the clean spatula that's buttered. This works so much better. So now I can actually use this to spread out all of the marshmallow without it being picked up. I wanna make sure that all of the gaps are filled in. So that way the marshmallow goes all the way to the edge of my pan and I don't have any air pockets. All of the cracks are filled. The, the thing that I'm worried about is even though we have this, right? The thing that I'm worried about is if we go to let this sit, there will be areas like when we cut it where the, the chocolate will just fall out. So I'm gonna sort of pre-cut it in a way on just one side to see how it looks and see if I can maybe just press, you know, into it so the marshmallow kind of collapses in a way. I think that's gonna be my best bet. And now to get those cuts, I'm gonna grab a really thin, sharp knife and then we're gonna butter it as well. Keep that in mind. And this is going to be the cuts that we need. I know pre-cutting marshmallows is not a thing, but I don't know if I'm gonna, re I'm not really gonna pre-cut it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dimple it to where it's perforated to about three quarters of the way down. So what I'm trying to do is just press areas of the marshmallow in where I think I'm going to eventually cut it. So this way, some of that seals off the chocolate while it's still wet. I don't know if this is actually gonna work. This is all in theory. And then we'll just smooth out the top one more time. Hopefully it settles the way I want it to settle. I think I'm going to leave it like this. What I should probably do is just still smooth it out just a little bit. So let's grab our, our spatula again and just, just lightly, you know? Lightly, like, don't mess with it too much. I want all the seams to kind of collapse again. 
So this way it kind of cures a little bit. Now, once you're here, all we have to do is cover it with powdered sugar. I'm gonna use just a little kind of tea strainer for this. I probably should do this over another like plate or bowl here. We'll just do it over this. So that way I can get some powdered sugar on here. You want a good amount of powdered sugar so nothing sticks. So I'm just gonna kind of be really generous with how much I'm doing. Oh, this thing sucks. Oh, this is a, I should get an actual sieve, you know? But you wanna make sure there's a good layer of powdered sugar on here. Look at this. That's as much as you really want on there. Like there's a significant amount of powdered sugar on there, but uh, this is what you really need so it doesn't like get weird while it's sitting around. All we need to do is cover this with just a touch of plastic. You wanna loosely cover it though. So the reason is because the marshmallow, like it might still be somewhat warm from the actual sugar mixture. So I'm just gonna loosely cover this just so nothing really falls onto it. That's kind of the, the goal, just slightly open like this. And then we have to let this sit for six hours before we can cut it. How am I supposed to wait for six hours? I wanna eat it now. So now it is definitely the next day and our marshmallows have set. So I'm really excited to bust these open. I'm hoping that they stick together and we're only gonna really know until we like, once we turn these over onto the cutting board. So let's, I'm, I, I want some marshmallow, okay? The thing is with marshmallow though, is you gotta make sure that you have uh, powdered sugar and cornstarch with this. Otherwise they are gonna stick. So we're gonna make a small combination of the both. And what I like to do is one part powdered sugar to a half part of cornstarch, or I guess one part and two parts, cause that's smarter. You don't even really need to measure this out. You could literally use a teacup or whatever you got. I'm just, I am using a measuring cup. <laughs> okay, well, that we're gonna count that. That's a, we're doing what? A third a cup of cornstarch and now, it, oh, oh, hold on, apron. Okay, I feel better about doing this with an apron on because of course, if I'm using powdered sugar and cornstarch, it is literally going to get everywhere. So we have the third of a cup of cornstarch in. I'm gonna just kind of guesstimate how much powdered sugar I need. We're just gonna go with that. That, that looks about right. Now just kind of give it a good forking so everything is kind of together. You don't want like pockets of cornstarch or pockets of powdered sugar anywhere. Just so you know, you have a little nice little mound of of sugar and starch ready to accept your marshmallows. Lucian, you are not allowed up here, sir. Can you get down? Can you get down? Or do you wanna go by the window? Come on, go by the window. Cats will own your life. So I'm going to place down just a little bit of my mixture on my cutting board, right? I probably should put a little bit more than that. Uh, I'm worried that it'll, it won't, it shouldn't stick too hard on this surface. I'm just worried about the other surface, but remember we did butter it up. So hopefully this comes out okay. Ooh, these look, these look pretty solid. I'm hoping that it releases from here pretty easily. Let's see if it just like falls out. Come on. Anybody, anybody want to join me? All right, we're going to need, <laughs> we're going to need a little spatula. Uh, hopefully an offset. Do I have it? Oh, I do have an offset spatula. I do have one. Look it. Come on. Yes. Oh no. Okay, so some of the layers didn't stay, which I kind of assumed was gonna happen. So instead of like dragging it, I'm gonna press into this as, instead, right? So that way you still kind of release from the side, but I'm not like dragging the layers away from each other. So let's try that. Let's see if, let's see if this will work. What I'm thinking is actually going to happen is the layers are just gonna be separated because that's gonna be my luck. Come on, come on, please, please. <gasps> Woo! Oh, look at this. Oh my God, that makes me so happy. Look at it, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. So now that we have this thing out of the actual mold, I'm gonna go ahead and dust the top of it, hopefully with a dry, dry hand, just so that way it doesn't stick too hard. So we're gonna dust it with the cornstarch and the sugar, but we're also going to make sure we grease up our knife. So that way when we go to cut this thing, it isn't sticking too hard. So probably could use a sieve for this, but I'm just gonna give it a nice little sprinkle on top, just make sure it's nice and rubbed down so that way you have a little bit of a working surface essentially. I think this will be okay. Now my other thought is if it's not sticking together, I'm just gonna blow torch it and seal it because fire. So we got our good old butter spray. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut these into maybe a one inch by one inch square for my marshmallow. Um, only so that way, maybe I'll use a couple of them for this. Now it's cutting really nicely. That's a good thing, but it definitely just made two layers. Like I can see that it only made two layers rather than like combining the layers together. I may have to, can I get five? I think I can get five out of this. Oh, that's gonna be, this is gonna be so hard to work with, but it is good though. Oh my God, it's so good. I'm gonna have to make sure that I like re grease my knife because I can see the layers underneath. Like it's losing the chocolate. So we're gonna have to make sure we're very careful. Okay, I'm gonna keep this thing gre- Why did I just shake the knife? I'm supposed to shake this one. Hopefully this keeps it from sticking too much. I actually don't know if this is gonna hold together how I want it to. So again, we have a contingency plan where we're just gonna torch this sucker. Come on, release. 
Okay, okay, we're good. Now here's the tricky part. Here's what I was worried about. You see how it's more of like a chocolate marshmallow sandwich? We're gonna have to try to fix that because I don't think this will hold up how I want it to because I want this to be still like individual marshmallows. I, I, I want them to hold up on their own. Oh my God. Oh my, I have to go get some of the Rachel. I'll be right back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to swap these cutting boards. So this is gonna be my new landing platform while that's over there. I'm gonna try this. We're just gonna do a few at a time. I did buy a torch, literally for this video. <laughs> oh God, oh God, oh God. You're <laughs> of course that would happen. I don't know if this is gonna work. So I'm gonna just try to maybe torch the edges, but then not all of them are gonna have edges. So let's see if we can, can you not right now? Can you stop freaking out? Woo! Okay, okay, stop freaking out. Let's see if, oh, that gave it a nice color right away. Um, well, I don't know if that'll work. We may just have to roll with it, which kind of sucks because I feel like they're gonna fall apart. This will definitely work for what we needed to do. Get this into that cast iron so we can press this into a sandwich. Yeah. Okay. That's just stupid. That's just stupid good. I'm gonna be so sick. So since I know the marshmallows aren't really going to hold together all that well, instead, I'm gonna layer them into this Tupperware. And I'm gonna kind of dip it to cover the sides that we cut. You know, kind of, you know, like this, this is fine. This is what I was hoping for. Rachel, I'm gonna be sick. So the wife and I picked up cookies last night. So instead, I'm gonna use this cookie box and lay these guys in here and I'll give them to a friend for a birthday gift, you know? Maybe they'll think that they're getting one of those fancy cookies, but instead, they're gonna get marshmallow chocolate sandwiches. Now we have all of these. I'm just going to go ahead and like do one of these, you know, just sprinkle some of this extra stuff on top because uh, I made it, so I may as well just kind of utilize it. Now, those are going to be used for this contraption that I'm gonna be using next. And I have an idea, and my ideas don't always work out, but we make the best of those ideas. Now these are all the things that are going to go into this hopefully ultimate s'mores. Graham crackers, a little bit of really nice bread. This is just some of that nice like Japanese bread that I picked up from Awajimaya. And then our marshmallows. Now we have to fit it all into here. My first thought, which is probably a bad one, is we're gonna grease up these cast irons just a little bit so that way nothing sticks too hard. Now the bread, my thought, was that it's going to be there to protect everything. Not necessarily to eat, like if we could eat it and it's not burnt, that'd be amazing, right? But it's also mostly meant to protect everything else. So I just wanna make sure that, you know, it's gonna be edible when everything is said and done. Now that we have these greased up, my, my other thought is like, well, this is obviously too big. So we could just maybe press it and hope for the best, but I also think that this is gonna be too thick with the marshmallows. So I'm gonna go old school and we're gonna roll out this piece of toast. Let's see how this comes out. What is on this toast? So what you wanna do is grab your rolling pin and just start rolling this out. This actually works out really well for their like appetizers and stuff. If you're actually doing this, you can roll them out super, super thin. Then you toast them up with just like a little bit of butter or just dry by themselves. And then you can use them as a cracker, which is freaking rad. And you can put whatever you want on it. Honestly, I just put like tuna mayo right on top and call it a day. I think we are gonna have to use, we're gonna have to use both. So, which is fine, but you see the difference now? in that bread. Yeah, let's go ahead and use both. We'll just go ahead and roll out both of them. Now, my other thought is if you did this, do you need the cast irons? I don't think you do. What if you just took these and encased the marshmallows in your bread and your graham crackers, okay? And then you wrapped it in foil and just threw it in the fire. It would be amazing. Now, th the next thought that I had is I wanna also protect the sides because the marshmallows are so thick. So I'm going to place one piece of bread on the inside of this guy, just so that way it's fully covered, right? So this way we make sure that it goes up the sides, but in order to clamp this, we're probably gonna have to cut it a little bit. So I'm just gonna grab, I'm actually just gonna use scissors, is just kind of trim the sides a little bit. Now you have yourself a little bread snack. Not that we need it. We're about to eat so much sugar. Just make sure it's as even as possible. There we go. And then we have like this little beautiful pocket of bread joy. Hmm, how do we wanna do this? I'm using honey-made graham crackers. I think they're delicious. If you want to take the time and make your own, go, go for it. Okay, okay. I think I'm gonna have to kind of coerce this. Looks like we can get three. We can get three crackers or three half crackers into that. I think that's gonna be, that's gonna be our best bet. But since this is encased by the bread, it's gonna be okay. Oh my God, they're so good. 
No, they got marshmallows. Oh, how is this gonna fit, dude? There's no way. Maybe if we smush it a little? Okay, maybe we won't be able to use, maybe we'll have to cut, cut one of them. If I were smart, I would have actually measured out like the marshmallows that we cut and then used that as my measurement for how big I wanted this to be. Now let's just go ahead and do whoop, one of those, cut this in half. Now we can try to try to layer this into this guy. There we go. Come on. Yes, please fit. Oh my God. So we can fit three marshmallows into the ultimate s'more. <laughs> I don't care who you are or where you're from. This is amazing. Look at this. What is this? What is this? You know what this is? Heaven. Okay, so now we just have to cap it. But we, oh my, this is exciting. Okay, so now we're gonna take the other, the other little floppy piece of bread and we're gonna encase our monstrosity with this. So I'm gonna kind of drape it over the top and then I'm gonna press it somewhat into the, I guess into the other one. This is gonna be kind of hard. So I think what I'll do is just trim it lightly at first so I can kind of see what I'm working with. And then maybe we can tuck in this piece of toast. I am gonna have to trim off the crust because it's thicker. So it doesn't seem like it's gonna wanna fit in as well. Unfortunately, crust is my favorite part, but you know, sometimes sacrifices have to be made in the pursuit of science. Okay, so now what I want to do is tuck this piece into this. I'm gonna do one of these. This is gonna be so glorious once it's done. Oh my God, guys, this is gonna work. I think we have it. We have our, <laughs> it's amazing. Look at this thing. Look at it. I'm encasing it in the bread. So the marshmallows don't leak out. Hopefully is the goal, but probably not gonna work. Oh, <gasps> I forgot to put the graham cracker on top. Hold on, I'm gonna take more graham cracker. That was almost a disaster. I would have been so sad. Put that right there. Now, exactly where we were, exactly where we were. The only thing is, is I think we're gonna have to make sure that the bread doesn't burn. It's gonna be pretty integral to this working. Bam, there's so many graham crackers. I'm gonna go for another run. Okay, okay, thumbs up, let's do this. Now, take the other cast iron. Or to seal this bad boy. I feel like I'm, a, you know, feel like I'm king under the mountain, you know? Feel like I'm a, a dwarf forging Mjolnir. Look at it fit perfectly. Look at it. So now make sure you press and then latch this bad boy on so that way it doesn't open up. And uh, we're gonna take it to the fire, which is just the stove, because we don't have fire, sad face. So luckily, this is a gas burner. And if you don't have gas, I mean, I'm, I guess you could, I'm gonna keep it like slow and low for now. So it just, you know, slowly cooks it. Uh, you could also just make your own, if you have a fire ring at home, you can maybe use that. You can use your barbecue. Um, you could honestly just throw this in the toaster oven and it's gonna be fine. But I really wanted to use these freaking camping cast iron things because I never had a chance to use them this year and uh, I'm really sad about that. So this is me camping in my, in my kitchen. So guys, you do want to make sure that you baby this. I'm trying to make sure that I don't really take my eyes off of it. I'm using a little burner now because the big one felt like it was just kind of going around it rather than more or less under it, but you're camping, so you're fine. All I need is a beer. Oh, look at, what is this? Pumpkin spice? <laughs> I have another beer. <laughs> okay, I am gonna I am gonna take a peek because the bread isn't like doesn't have a lot of color or anything, but you can like it's soft. It is soft. So I think uh, maybe we'll do like maybe we'll do like two maybe 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 sixty seconds more. I'm just gonna let this hang out on the cutting board. Uh, hopefully, you know we'll just use. I think the cutting board will be fine, right? You know, it's wood. Wood burns sometimes. We're just gonna let it sit for like a minute. Just don't touch it. Just leave it. Wub, wub, wub. Oh my God, that's, that is, yo, that's sexy. Look at this. Oh, yes. My God. Oh, what? Forged in the fires of Mount Doom, the ultimate s'more. I think most of the chocolate leaked out, but this is okay. Okay, I'm gonna try to turn this over onto a plate. Come on, come on, release. No, do not do this. Do not leak everywhere. Did we go too long? It's, it's so soft. Please, please. Okay, okay, it made it out. I think all of the marshmallow is melted. We're gonna let that hang out. I'm not gonna mess with it right now. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to cut this, but just looking at it, I feel like the marshmallows have totally melted. It's definitely not what we want. So we may have to fire another one. Oh, oh, we can't even penetrate. No, do not fall apart. I should hold on. We're just gonna go, we're just gonna go with it on the cutting board, can I? At this point, oh, this is a freaking disaster. It fused to the plate. Can it? No, look, it totally melted. She'll make another, oh, it's got it's so hot though. Well, definitely, the marshmallows definitely didn't hold up. Oh, so hot. Because my marshmallows turned into, into goo. Mm. Okay, round two. Okay, I've made a second one. 
Here it is, and unfortunately, I only have these two slices of bread left, so I'm going to make sure that you guys smash the like button. But we're also only going to cook this for about literally like 40 seconds on each side, and I'm going to set a timer for those 40 seconds because this is going to be it. This is it. This is the end game. It's just, it's not as exciting as like actual end game, but it's pretty thrilling to me. Hope it doesn't melt again. That'd be unfortunate. I'd have to get more bread. Three, two, one. That's 40 seconds on both sides. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot of time, but those marshmallows were very, very sensitive. Um, and I should have realized that when I went to go and torch them. So I actually just want to see what, what this feels like. Now, I guess the best way to do this, because I don't want to like unveil the entire thing and worry that like the structure may be compromised. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a little, just a little hello. Yes, we can go. We're gonna go another, another 30 seconds on each side. There we go. 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds is done. Now I'm gonna let this just sit for another, let's say 30 seconds. Let some of that residual heat kind of carry it through and then that's it. We're not messing with it. Okay, the resting period of 30 seconds is done. Let's see what this bad boy looks like. I mean, it's looking pretty good. It's definitely not crispy at all, but that's, that's totally fine. I don't care about the bread being crispy. Oh, the marshmallows are good. Okay, I gotta get this out of the cast iron. Look at this. We can actually just go in. Oh my God, we're just gonna go in on it. How do I want to eat this? Beautiful, it's just gorgeous. Now my thought with this, since there is the marshmallows underneath, we're gonna take the nonstick spray, just kind of grease up the knife a little bit so it has that smooth cutting action. And we're just gonna kind of rough. Let's see if I can, please don't explode. You know what, I, sh I should actually use a serrated. Let's see if the serrated might be better because I feel like this is so much more work than it might be worth, but welcome to the lab. Okay, so I cut through the crust. Now we'll take the other knife. And we're gonna go one motion. Come on, yes! Oh, look at it! Holy sh! That's like the ultimate s'more right there. Oh my god, do you guys see this? Do you see this? I honestly feel like this is like a crowning achievement right now. I can't explain to you the feelings that I have towards this. I know Rachel's right here. She's staring at me like, give me some. It was so good. 30 seconds on the, oh my god, I'm like, okay, you're just gonna go. Cheers. It's just, it's just happiness. Tucked in, two pieces of bread. Oh my God. The, like the possibilities are endless now. This is awkward. How? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh. oh, dude, I don't need this. No self-control. No self-control. Don't do it, mm -mm. you're sick. Uh -huh. I can't, I can't function. Let me clean myself and compose my thoughts. This s'mores monstrosity is something I didn't think I'd be able to make. I had the idea in my head. I'm glad it came together in the way that it did. I wish that the graham cracker was a little more pronounced so you kind of have that graham cracker crunch, but the flavor is still there and the marshmallows and the chocolate are amazing and you're able to use it in that thing, which is really what I wanted to do. I've been making freaking s'mores all day. Rachel's been making necklaces in her spare time and uh, she has her own Etsy shop now and I'm actually very proud of that because it's her first Etsy shop and that's really cool. If you guys wanna check it out, it is Metals, Stones and Bones. Yeah. You can check out the links below. She has quite a few really cool necklaces for sale and uh, they have like dead animals on them, you know, some bones and stuff. I don't know. She's doing things and she's taking names. So if you guys wanna check that out, that'd be really cool. My name is Chef PK. Welcome to the lab. Get subscribed and remember, Keep playing with your food. I can't eat this. It's too much sugar.